Let's improve our chat page by displaying some real usernames on it. So instead of displaying me on our messages, we want to display our username, in this case Danny. And on their messages, instead of displaying them, we want to display their username, in this case Jim. We also want to display their username in this offline status bar and also at the top in the title bar. If you're new here, my name's Danny, I'm an indie app developer. And if you want to learn how to create cross-platform apps for iOS, Android, Mac and Windows from a single code base, click subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's first of all display our username on our messages. So I'm going to jump to the chat page, page chat.view. And so where can we get our username from? Well, if we go to the view dev tools and scroll down to state, we have our user details here. We can see our name there. So we can just map this user details object from the state to this view component and display our name from there. So we're already including map state. And I'm just going to add user details to this array. Now, if we jump up to the queue chat message and our name prop, we can change this into a ternary if statement. So if message.from is equal to me, then we can just output our username. So user details.name. Otherwise, we'll just output them for now. Save that. That doesn't seem to be working. I'll just reload the page. Click on Jim. Oh, that's working now. We can now see our username on our messages. And we want to display the other user's username in a few different places on their messages and in this offline bar and at the top. So how can we get that? Well, if we look at our state again, we have all the users inside this users object. And we have the user ID of the person we're chatting to in our root parameter. So we can use that root parameter to grab the other user's details from this users object and get their name from there. So I'm going to create a new computed property on this page chat view component. So I'll add that here. And I'm going to call this other user details. And we're going to want to grab something from our store here. And we can do that like this. So this dot dollar store dot state dot and then the name of the module we want to grab from which is store dot and then we want to grab from the users object and we want to grab the data at the key of this users user id which we have in our root parameters so we can just do it like we did down here so i'll copy that paste that in here save that so we should have access to the other users details now so if I jump up to that Q chat message component and this name prop. So if message.from is equal to me, then we display our username. Otherwise, instead of displaying them, we can now do other user details dot name. Save that. And we can now see Jim's name on this message. OK, so let's display their name in this offline banner as well. So here's that banner. So instead of outputting user here, we can output again other user details dot name. Save that. And it now says Jim is offline. Now we also want to display Jim's name at the top here. It did say chat before, but that's disappeared for some reason. However, this title bar is in a different component. This is in the mylayout.view component. So we could just copy this computed property we've created and paste that into our mylayout.view file, but then we'd be duplicating code. So instead, I'm going to stick this computer property into a mixin, which can then be used by multiple components. So I'm going to create a new folder within our source folder called mixins, and within that, I'm going to create a new file called mixin other user details.js. To create a mixin, we just have an export default object. And within that, we can place anything we would normally place within a view component, such as computed properties, methods, the data function, 
whatever we want. So in this case, we just need a computed object. And we want to paste in this other user details, computed property that we created before. So I'm going to cut that out of this file and paste it into this computed object within our mixing. Save that. Now back on page chat.view, we need to import this mixing. So we can do that like this, import, then we want to give it a name. So I'll call it mixing other user details from, and then the path to our mixing, which is source slash mixins slash mixing dash other user details dot JS. And we also need to add it to our mixins array within our data like this. So mix in other user details, save that. Okay, so that's still working on our chat page. Now that we have this mixing, we can use it on our mylayout.view file so that we can output the user's name in the title bar as well. So I'll open up the layout file, layouts mylayout.view. Um, we need to import this mixing again. So I'm going to copy this import from our page chat component paste that in there and I'll just copy this mixins array as well and paste that here. Save that. Okay, so now we should have access to the other users details within our mylayout.view file as well. So we're currently spitting out the title in the title bar using a computed property, this title computed property here. So we're going to have to adapt this a little bit. So if current path is slash return smack chat, else if current path is equal to slash chat, return chat. Okay, the reason we can't see chat there anymore is because the current path isn't equal to slash chat anymore. It's equal to slash chat slash and then a big long user ID. So we can change this else if to else if current path dot includes instead. So if the path includes slash chat, then we want to return something. But we don't want to return chat anymore. We want to return the other user's name. We now have access to the other user's details thanks to this mixing. So, so if the current path includes chat, then we want to return this dot other user details dot name. Save that. Great. We can now see the other user's username at the top. If you found this video useful so far, make sure you smash the like button and leave a comment telling me something you've done with Quasar. Okay, let's fix this offline banner now. We only want to show this if the other user is offline. So I'm going to jump back to page chat.view and jump to this Q banner. Uh, we can add a v if directive to this. So v if. Uh, we only want to display this if the other user's online status is set to false. So what we can do is v if other user details dot online. Actually, we want to do exclamation mark. So if other user details dot online is set to false, then display this banner. Otherwise, don't display it. So I'll save that. And we're currently chatting with Jim right now. So I'm going to open the app in a different browser and log in with Jim. So Jim at test.com. And we now see that banner disappear when Jim logs in. And if Jim logs out again, we should see that banner appear again. Yep, we see it back there again. Okay, great. So let's just make sure all of these usernames are working for different users as well. So I'll go back, click on Lucy. Yep, it now says Lucy at the top and Lucy is offline. Let's log out Danny and log in with Jim. And we'll click on Danny. Yeah, now it says Danny at the top, Danny is offline. And our messages have all our usernames on them. Okay, I'm just going to reload the page to make sure we don't have any errors. Okay, we seem to have an error here. Cannot read property name of undefined. And I think that's because if we jump to that mixing, when the app first starts up, 
this users object in the state hasn't been populated yet with the data from Firebase. So I'm just going to modify this so that it only returns the other user's details if the user's object has been populated. So we can just add an if statement and copy this, paste that in there. So if that user exists, then return that user's details. Otherwise, we'll just return an empty object. We'll save that, reload the app, and I'll click on a user and reload the page. Okay, that error has now disappeared. Okay, so we can now display all of the messages pretty nicely with usernames and everything. But we can't send a message yet. So in the next video, we're going to have the ability to send a message. So if we type a message in here and hit enter, we'll write that message to our database, both within our data and within the data of the person that we're chatting to as well. And we'll also make sure that all of our users can see these messages appear in real time. Make sure you click my head to subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. If you want to grab the source code for this app, go to dannys.link slash smackchatcode. And if you want to learn all of the basics of Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex, and Firebase, and check out my full course at dannys.link slash quasar.